Lights off, lights out. What's going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning back in for another video on the Dirty Max Jack YouTube channel. If you're questioning who in the heck is this guy, my name is Jack, I have two Duramaxes, my wife has a RAV4, if you are curious. And we do a lot of Duramax truck stuff specifically on this channel. Now, if you have been watching for a while, you guys know that I've had a few vehicles on the channel, most of them being white, because I fancy white vehicles. It's just a personal preference of mine, but I also had an orange Corvette Z06. <laughs> that I'd actually brought up in one of my previous uploads, and I do miss it, and one day I'm going to get another Corvette. I can promise you guys that, just not in the immediate scope, because we have a Mini Max for building an interim race truck. It's been a lot of fun, and there have been some awesome companies that have worked with me along the way, and there are gonna be a lot more that do work with us on that build as well. But there's one thing that I really wanted to get into quickly that I'm getting a ton of feedback about from some of my previous videos, and that is the Cove Commuter. Guys, I talk about this thing, this is like the fourth time or third time that I've talked about this specific speaker in my videos, and that's because y'all are buying these and you're loving them. You're seriously super stoked with your purchase. This is a $200 speaker that you get 65% off through discount code DMJ. That link is below. That so many of you guys have taken advantage of and you are all so stoked about it. I'm getting comments, direct messages. If you guys want, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll put that somewhere right here on the screen. But I'm really happy that you guys are all loving this purchase and I wanted to make that link available again and talk about it again in one of my videos because a lot of you are reaping the benefits and that makes me extremely happy. So if you guys want, you can go check that out here after this video is complete or if you want, you can click on it right now. Just make sure you hit pause. Now, another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that we are only a few weeks away from giving away this 2018 Grom. It's currently covered by actually one of my new enthusiast hoodies that I just got in. We do have nice hoodies that are available now being that we're going into the fall season or we're technically already in the fall season. So we've got them available on the site. We're gonna have a lot of new products coming out here as well but it's been a ton of fun. We did some levers, grips, handlebars. We did the rear fender mod, AKA the fender eliminator delete kit, the turn signals, front and back, Yoshimura exhaust, and we're gonna do some off-road tires. So now the big struggle of making this video, and I'm gonna include you guys in this every single step of the way is the fact that I wanna talk about lifted versus lowered in this video. We're gonna go into the details of what I prefer, why I went lowered, why I went lifted on these specific trucks that are right here in front of me. Jack, you're one guy. How are you gonna move two trucks? And I've got the solution for that. First steps first, we gotta move one truck. Could have called a friend, but we got two pickups, so we might as well use them. So today I was feeling a little bit spontaneous and I just kind of wanted to include you guys in what actually goes in real life to setting up for a YouTube video. Most of the times you guys see a finished product, but that is only about 10% of what actually went into making a video. So here's a little lesson for you. Today's filming destination is gonna be this super random airport that I found quite literally in the middle of nowhere. Perfect vlogging destination. That's what I love about the Grom. So freaking versatile. It's amazing. All right, and the ship has landed, or should I say ships, because we're talking two figures rather than one, and they're both kind of large in and of their own way. Oh, uh, side note, guys, I almost forgot, let me focus in the camera here a little bit. I almost forgot that I kind of lied to you guys a little bit here. On Sunday of last week, I wanna say that was October 7th, 2018, I had put a post up on Instagram and on YouTube, like the, you know, the comment thing on YouTube, and I said, look guys, I am not gonna be doing a video at all this week, because there's some things that are requiring my time, which are one, family, and two, business. I travel a lot for my job, or at least my new job, which is basically consuming a ton of my time, but it was an awesome promotional opportunity that I couldn't pass down. It's with an awesome company that's in the technology space, and I'm extremely happy about where I work now, is that it takes time to transition, just like anything else, and lately, I've been feeling extremely burnt out, and I don't want to be burnt out on my vlogs, because I want to be energetic and charismatic and really excited, because passion is the priority. Yes, a little bit of a dig for enthusiasts, but it's my motto in life. Passion 
passion is the priority. You need to be passionate and excited and embrace what it is that you do. And lately, I felt like I wasn't really doing that. I don't know why, I guess I was caught in a rut, but people are people and I am one of the same. I'm not an alien like Elon Musk claims that he is. So to my subscribers that are unbelievably attentive, yes, I am here and I kind of lied. I am, I apologize. That is the end of that. And I forgot to mention as well when I was talking about the Grom earlier, every $5 equals one entry for that Grom if you want to get entered to win that. The giveaway ends October 22nd. I believe that's about three weeks away, maybe two weeks. I'm not really doing my date math too well right now, but it's going to be ending soon. And then we're going to be doing something just maybe a little bit bigger. Can't give all the details for that right now. Look at the trucks right now. They look so good. The LML freshly detailed from Peach Bottom Auto Body. The LLY not really detailed because I was just on one of my buddy's farms dropping some stuff off. Long story short, they both look good together. I love seeing them together. This is actually the first time that I've ever been able to get them out and about together. And luckily I drove past this airport and asked the owners if it was cool if I would film this video here and they were all about it. Really cool, really, really cool. That's kind of one of the beauties is you just drive around and you find some really awesome things when you're vlogging. Definitely one of the pros. Got the farmers out here. They are slaying their crop. You can see these fields are down. These are still up. Is that feed corn? I believe that's feed corn. No farmer, no agricultural expert here. Enough of me blabbling. Let's get into the subject matter of the video, which is lowered or lifted. I have, I've been blessed to say that I have experienced both and I've also been able to formulate my own opinions about both. Now, if I had to pick one right off the bat, I would go lifted because you buy a diesel truck and the natural instinct, like we crawl before we walk, you buy stock, you lift. That's just how it works. I have a shirt that says lift, do fun stuff, offset, repeat. That's kind of what I did there without the D word. And that's just kind of self-explanatory. But there's a lot of guys, especially now, I feel like it's extremely common to get Duramax trucks or any truck in general, light duty, heavy duty, doesn't matter really what we're talking about here. Any truck for the matter in scope and they lower it. So I decided, well, I have my 15, it is lifted. How about I go ahead and lower this truck? And this truck is more or less intended for a different purpose. Now there's a third option in there and that's level. My buddy Mark Decola, actually super thorough guy, unbelievably smart in any of the diesel truck platforms. I really, really look up to his knowledge and understanding of diesel trucks, especially modern diesel trucks. But he did a post on his Instagram. If you guys haven't checked him out already, get, definitely go ahead and do so. I'll put his info right here. He did a post, I believe it's saved on his Instagram about the pros of leveling as well. So if you wanna consider lower, lifted, and then level, which would kinda of sit like right there in the middle, you can go ahead and check him out. So now that you know you have three options, lower, lift, level, which one is the best? So really you're obtaining a street fighter look when you go with the leveled route. This truck right here is leveled three inches in the rear. It's got drop shackles that I'll actually put in the description below. I got them off of Amazon. They were like $89 and basically required un unscrewing the torsion keys all the way down. So there's no tension on them currently. The overall job here cost about $200 because I'm gonna say it was about $120 to align it roughly. That could be wrong. And $89 for the drop shackles. I think it was free shipping because I'm a Prime member. So you're looking to $200 to achieve this look. Not all that bad. Whereas on the contrary, we're talking about a Cognito four to six inch lift. The NTBD, basically no torsion bar drop, none of those torsion bar extensions on this specific lift kit made by Cognito, one of the best aftermarket lift kit manufacturers personally in the aftermarket space. That kit, if I'm not mistaken, with the upper control arms and, and the aftermarket keys, the Bilstein shocks was roughly about $2,500 and then about $300 in shipping because it weighs a ton. Not literally a ton, but it is very heavy. And then of course you've got the alignment, which is about $120 as well, as long as you can find a rack that fits 14 wides in my instance. Let's introduce another aspect, ease of installation. That's one usually that people don't think about. And if you're trying to do this yourself, definitely consider this option. If you're gonna be doing installing it yourself, make sure that you have a lift that you can throw it up on. You can do it on the ground if you so choose to, but I can promise you that everything on this truck is three times harder to move or remove move then let's just say that RAV4 just for comparative purpose. So if you're going to be doing it yourself definitely set a few hours aside because it's going to take a while. It's going to require some cutting, a good knowledge base, and a good set of tools. Or if you go the alternative route you can pay somebody to install it. That build's going to range anywhere between $800 to $1,500 depending on the shop and how many shops are in your area because that would play into supply and demand. So overall to achieve a lifted look you're looking at about $3,000 with the alignment, the shipping, and the cost of the lift kit and then an additional grand to $1,500 to get it installed. So let's just round above because when you're budgeting, it's always good to go up. Let's say 
$4,500 for the lift kit. This truck, on the other hand, I installed myself. It was extremely easy. All you had to do was drop the stock drop shackle in the rear, throw the new one up in there, bolt it in, use two jacks, and you were pretty much good to go. So the installation was free on this truck. So overall, we're looking at $200 versus $4,500. In my personal opinion, that would be the number one decision maker for me. The number two decision maker, which would probably make me consider what direction I was definitely gonna go, would be the look. Now, personally, I'm a lifted truck kind of guy, but you can make lower trucks look really good. Now, granted, we're comparing a crew cab versus a single cab, so, you know, right, it's not one to one, but you can get a general idea. Now, a lot of people say that both of these setups are incapable of towing, and I'm gonna say in both instances, that is completely wrong. Lifted trucks can't tow, lower trucks can't tow, you need to keep it stock. Well, no, stock trucks can't tow. I'm being a little bit rhetorical in the sense that, that any setup can tow, whether it's stock, lifted, or lowered. It just all depends on the payload of what you're towing. Loads up to 15,000 pounds with this truck, and yes, it squats big time. I definitely lost a lot of rigidity with lowering that truck, but there's a solution for both of those problems. You can do helper bags. I don't have helper bags because I don't tow all that often. I have used this truck and this truck to tow multiple times, and they do well, but they will squat regardless of the fact. So I'm not gonna say, so I would say don't base your decision on whether or not you can tow with it because there are things that you can add down the road which will make that possible. Ride quality, which one's better? I'll tell you what, if we had a level truck here in the middle, that would be the worst on the ride quality list. Both of these trucks ride incredibly well. Lifted versus lowered, I'm gonna score them both on the exact same range because both of these trucks have zero tension on their torsion keys. This truck has aftermarket torsion keys and upper control arms, which has taken all of the pressure off of that torsion bar system System, so this truck rides like a Cadillac with bow ties. This truck also has no pressure on the torsion keys. It's all the way down, so it also rides well. Now this is an older truck, so it floats a little bit more. This truck's a little bit newer, so it's a little bit more rigid in the front, but they both ride ridiculously well, and I couldn't say that one is better than the other. Granted, this truck's newer, so it's gonna be nicer, but you guys get the point. Now handling, I'm gonna say turning and handling. This truck, is actually a little bit stiffer than that truck, surprisingly. And I don't know why, maybe that's because of the shocks. I'm really not specifically sure. I'm not gonna pretend like I know. This truck does have newer shocks on it and it's wider. It's got 14 wides versus 12 wides, but this thing actually handles extremely well. It's actually really impressive and unbelievably surprising. I surprise myself all the time when driving the truck and people are surprised when they drive this truck under the rare circumstances that I let them drive. That truck though also handles really well. It's low, so it's got a lower center of gravity, it doesn't feel like there's much body roll, so you can kind of knock that off of the list. Another thing that you guys might wanna consider is convenience. I have my grandpa steps, I love my grandpa steps. A lot of you guys hate on these. We'll get rid of them eventually, well, we will, but I like them for right now because I am seriously avoiding wear and tear on the bolster of my seat. By simply stepping up and into the truck, I am avoiding all of the wear and tear that would otherwise be on me sliding up onto this bolster, and when I get out of the truck, I can conveniently step out and down. That's what I really like. Rather than you see people that don't have these steps because they don't like the look of them, but then what they do is they slide out like that. And you can imagine time and time again, that is going to wear the crap out of this bolster. And me personally, I don't wanna do that because I like to preserve the interior of my truck. I actually got a perfect example for you guys. Now granted, this truck was completely stock when I got it and I lowered it so it's a little easier to get in and out of, but you can see just how crappy it makes the bolster. I mean, there's like no padding there anymore because this was slid in and out of, whereas this side, that's like nice and stiff. It really supports you. This side, it doesn't. And I am not even saying this to reinforce my point, but you can actually feel it in your back because the support is uneven. So you're kind of sitting like this when you're driving this truck. And all these things kind of lead into one another, but it's just something to consider. Accessibility, drastically different. So if you're the type of guy that doesn't have a top side crawler or the ability to jump up into your vehicle to do work on it, if you're a DIYer, definitely go ahead and lower your truck. Everything's gonna be easier. Routine maintenance, modifications, and everything in between. You can reach in here and simply change the oil, whereas in this case, I mean, I can still reach in here and change it, but you can see literally I'm sprawled across the truck. So my, that might be one thing that you'd wanna factor in. Modifying this truck is inherently more challenging than modifying this truck 
due to accessibility. And there is a quick little glimpse at the differences. You've got three inches down versus five inches up here. I'd say that that's about eight inches. Now, another pretty key element is what kind of feeling do you want when you're driving? Do you want to feel like you are owning the road and you are seeing over everybody? Personally, this is my kind of view. Whereas when you have a lowered truck, you get all the great sounds of a turbo diesel, but you sit inside, it doesn't really feel the same. I feel like I'm driving little cars. My wife says, my wife says she loves the Minimax because she doesn't feel intimidated by the size. In a situation where, let's just say your wife or your girlfriend, or maybe even you lack the confidence behind the wheel. There's a Duramax there, nice buddy. He might, he might be coming back. I think he's coming back. <laughs> So as I was saying, if you lack that confidence, then maybe being lowered is a little bit better for you. And then ease of accessibility. Getting that into a parking garage is a hell of a lot easier than getting that into a parking garage or that into your garage versus that in your garage. Unfortunately, at my current house, that does not fit. That, on the other hand, does. So that might be something that you wanna consider as well. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we chose the Minimax to put the Grom in rather than the big truck because it's just so much easier to load. Naturally you're not fighting as much gravity, fighting a force that naturally needs to keep us grounded. So something to be mindful of. And then the last point that I'm going to introduce in this video is how often are you driving your truck? Do you live in an area where driving a lifted big truck every day is gonna be convenient or inconvenient? Is it tight and suburban or is it wide open and rural? Kind of like this area right here. Because at the end of the day, you don't wanna spend a bunch of money on something that you're excited about to find out that it's a total pain in your ass. Now, what do I do? I do live in literally the middle of nowhere. And I love driving this truck when I'm in the middle of nowhere. But when I have to go somewhere that's tight, I choose that one. And I'm really blessed to say that I'm in the position to have that ability to do so. But if you guys are looking to make a decision, collectively consider all of the different angles that I've introduced in this video because I feel as if it will tremendously benefit you and make you enjoy your purchase that much more. You spend some money, you make some compromises, a little bit less accessible, looks freaking awesome. You spend a little bit less money, still looks awesome, equally as awesome, might have to go smaller wheel size, easy to drive, throw anybody in it, easy to load. There are a lot of pros and cons, as I suggested. Definitely consider getting entered for the Grom. I can't wait to pick one of you guys. I just wanna reinforce the fact that if you don't enter, you don't win. It's kinda of like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You got unlimited arrows in your quiver right now and you got a bunch of prime time bucks standing right in front of you, but it's just a matter of whether or not you decide to pull the trigger. And lastly, guys, I will be attending SEMA this year. Oh my God, I am so stinking excited. I'm gonna be actually involved. We are gonna be part of the Battle of the Builders and I'll have some free time to get around to hopefully meet some of you guys if you're vendors so please message me I want to know if you guys are gonna be there as well so maybe I can take some time to get to know you get you on the vlog and just hang out it's gonna be awesome I'm gonna cover so much freaking content when I'm there guys it's gonna be my first time so I'm gonna be literally like a little kid in a candy shop I couldn't be more excited about it so keep that in mind SEMA is from October 29th I want to say to November 2nd could be wrong on those dates but I know I'm going out there within that time frame so yeah Anyway, but my like leak, I freaking love you guys. Do what you do best. Smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. Thanks, guys. I'll see you all in the next upload.